Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. I am excited about this opportunity to speak to you. Now, the truth is this. I have uh, been enjoying a little sabbatical for the last couple of days with my lovely wife, Pamela. And guess what she did? She's so sweet. She let me come off sabbatical for a day. <laughs> to come and, and, and talk to you. And I will be preaching tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And then we're going to take another little break and we'll be in place ready to go Easter Sunday morning. So yes, uh, uh, I'm here. I had announced to the church and thank God when I let the saints know that we're taking a break, I tell you, they pray for us, but uh, nobody reaches out. No one calls or anything. And I really appreciate that because when we do take a break, we're trying to get a little much needed rest and I enjoy time with her. So I'm here because I, I'm excited about the service tonight. And these are some uh, some times, my friends, in which we are living in. And there is a direct intersection that is a collision between good biblical common sense and the things that are going on in this world today because there are some things that that I hear people say that I see that are going on that makes no sense whatsoever now I'm going to sound for the next few minutes more like a sportscaster than a gospel preacher, because I want to bring up something that's been in the news, and that is the uh, the, the female, the 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 women's uh, national basketball championship. I'm probably not even saying it correctly, so you know I'm not necessarily a fan and keep up, uh, perhaps even as I should. But I do know this: LSU uh, beat Iowa 102 to 85, and it seems to me that uh, the game was over before. It started uh, LSU. Uh, if I'm if I'm not, I think I'm correct on this. Led the entire game, and they were up double digits at halftime. And they uh, went on in the second half and closed the doors on Iowa, and they won the game. Now, as you know, controversy broke out because uh, the young lady, a young lady who plays uh, for LSU, Angel Reese, uh, Angel, uh, she did the. Uh, the Don, the, the John Cena, uh, wrestling thing where John Cena goes, you can't see me. Now I'm more familiar with John Cena <laughs> at the WWE in wrestling than I am with the, with the basketball. So I'm aware of the you can't see me thing. And she did this, uh, to, uh, one of the uh, athletes, um, who play for, uh, Iowa. I think her name is Caitlin. And so, but the, but the, the controversy, uh, did I get the name right? Was it Ka uh, Ka Caitlin? The controversy is that when uh, Caitlin did it just a few days ago, everybody thought it was cool, suave, and nice, you know, bam. Then when it's done to her, uh, Angel is called classless, tasteless. One uh, sportscaster, Keith uh, Oberman, who has since then apologized, uh, even used profanity to, to describe uh, what this uh, young lady, uh, what uh, Angel Reese did, and called her an idiot, and he used an expletive before the word idiot. But he did not use an expletive or, or when he when Caitlin did it and he didn't even call Caitlin uh, an idiot. And so it, it, it brought a racial component to it. You know, if, if you pretend that there's no racial component to it now, you, you're being intellectually dishonest because Angel is black and Caitlin is white. Um, and so Angel, uh, she did the, you can't see me as well, and then pointed to her ring finger that she was going to get a ring. In that context, and please bear with me just for a moment, a Dr. Jill Biden, first lady of the United States of America, suggested that she was going to speak to her husband and uh, invite uh, both teams. Uh, to the White House, which breaks precedence. And uh, 
uh, uh, one can't help but ask that if LSU would have lost, would she have uh, uh, said let's invite both teams had Iowa won? Now, I've been trying to tell you for the last longest that there are no racists like white leftists. And I don't understand black America's love affair with the, the, uh, the white leftist Marxists. Why we team up with these people and we just seemingly are so in love with them. Vote for them 91% of the time. And that may be Gary a low estimation, but we tend to do so. So the first lady, first lady Jill, Dr. Jill Biden said, we're going to invite both teams. And when she said that, it set a firestorm uh, to blaze. Now, now, uh, uh, Shannon Sharp, I saw him on Undisputed, uh, his television show that he shares with uh, uh, Skip Bayless. And, you know, as you can tell, I'm somewhat of a sport fan. I try to keep up with it. Uh, I tend to uh, favor at times uh, Undisputed than some of their rivals, my friends, mainly uh, the profanity. What has happened? Uh, Brother Garrett, what's happened to these sportscasters? I mean, you don't give a D and you're always cussing about this and cussing about that. And uh, th th has Disney told ESPN that we require that the black guys do most of the cussing? I mean, what is this? Now, when I was coming up, and and some of these guys who use the majority of the of the profanity, they're the first one who calls themselves uh, a wordsmith. But I was told that when you resort to profanity, that it is because you have a limited vocabulary and you can't make your point any other way. So I guess that has changed. But I'm telling you, 10 a.m. in the morning, it's just too early to hear the D word and oh, all of the profanity that is being used. Uh, um, so I tend to, uh, uh, in, uh, undisputed, uh, uh, you don't hear as much. But I was watching, and uh, uh, Shannon uh, Sharp, I am a fan, who Shannon suggested that, that uh, Dr. Jill Biden's suggestion that the losing team be invited to the White House also, which I uh, do not believe, that should happen. The precedence is clear. The winning team gets the invitation. And uh, she should not have said that. And from what I understand, she has issued uh, an apology of sorts uh, and, uh, and, and has retracted those statements and through her press conference. And so... Um, uh, I, I listen. I have no problem with uh, uh, Angel Reese's uh, uh, her her anger. I agree with her. I agree with the comments uh, that uh, Shannon Sharp made. But Shannon said this. He said this may have caused uh, President Biden uh, re-election uh, because I guess because blacks aren't going to vote for him because his wife suggested that uh, the losing team be invited to the White House. Now, I'll tell you something, my friend. Here's the biblical angle on it. The first thing that came to my mind was Matthew's gospel, chapter number 23 and verse 24. Jesus was rebuking the, the scribes and the Pharisees. In chapter number 23, our Lord called them with an exclamation point on more than one occasion, hypocrites. Woe unto you, scribe, Pharisees, hypocrites, he called them. And in his uh, 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 rebuking of the scribes and Pharisees, our Lord said this in verse 24. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, which Strain at a gnat, that little gnat flying around. If that gnat somehow gets into your mouth, you strain to swallow the gnat, but you have no trouble swallowing a huge camel. Now, my friends, listen to me now, and I'm, I'm getting ready to invite you to service tonight. And uh, but uh, 
But think about this. Let's say, for instance, Dr. Jill Biden's suggestion, which has been uh, uh, taken back, it's, it's been uh, it's done away with. Uh, let's say, for instance, her suggestion does call cause the black community to not vote for President Biden, which uh, just for the record, I don't believe that. I don't think that that's anything President Biden or Dr. Jill Biden could do that would cause the black community not to vote for him. The man said, if you don't vote for me, then you ain't black. If that didn't stop you, I, I don't think anything will. Just, just, just my own commentary. But let's just say for... I don't know, just humor me, and let's say Shannon is right. You talking about uh, straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. President Biden, President Biden, President Biden opposes choice in education. What if we actually had choice in education in all of our states across this great country? What if the money was actually allocated, allocated, allocated to the child and not to the school district? Do you know how many kids could get out of the black and brown poor kids could get out of poor performing schools? And with that voucher, get into a good private school or a Christian private school? Or if you just keep the money allocated to the child, and not to the district, that would even that would even cause the public schools to work harder because one thing all private schools know, if you lose the student, you lose your money. This is not true with the public school system. If the kid drops out, if the kid doesn't show up, if the kid, if the kid goes to Mars, if you never hear from the kid again for that year, that money that's all allocated to that district to that seat, not to the child, the school still gets the money. So there's no real incentive to educate the kid. There's no in incentive to teach the child because they're not going to lose a dime. That, or should I say, no financial incentive. On the other hand, with the publics, with the private schools, there is every financial incentive to educate that child. Because if the child drops out, the parents aren't pleased, the customers aren't satisfied, they pull, they yank their kid out of school, and guess what? The money goes with the child. President, President uh, Biden opposes that. Oh, the things that could be done in the black community. Uh, if just just this change was taking place, matter of fact, most Democrats I know, uh, I ain't gonna say all, but most of them I know uh, opposes it. They want to keep uh, uh, our kids uh, locked into poor performing schools where they won't have the opportunity to do better. And 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 get this, parents who have their children in private schools pay taxes as well. One argument is if you take this, if, if, if we would allow this, this would take money from the public school system. That's not true. It would actually be a raise to the public school system because the average private school will educate the child for 50 percent less than what is allocated in the public school. So if the child is gone, you still have an empty seat and 50 percent of the money is still going to that empty seat. Because the other half of the money would go to the private school to educate the child and they can do it much cheaper and much better. So it doesn't hurt the public school system. But he opposes this. Uh, he is he has given a full throated endorsement of all things abortion, even up to the time of uh, birth. Do, have you ran the numbers? Do you know how abortion disproportionately affects the black community? Do you not know that even though we are 13 percent, 13 percent and some change of the nation's population, our women make up 8 percent, but our ovulating women are 3 to 4 percent and 3 to 4 percent of the U.S. population of women are responsible for at least 39 percent of the nation's abortions. Do you not know that if the black community, if blacks alone, if black women alone would just stop having abortions, that the abortion industry would go out of business?
Do you not know that at least 78% of Planned Parenthood abortuaries are located within two miles of high, bl high black and brown uh, populated areas? Oh, we're targeted. We're targeted. And yet uh, that camel, uh, the black community can swallow. The uh, uh, resistance to vouchers to get us out of some of these poor performing public schools, we can swallow that. President Biden uh, is for the mutilation of children. He, he has given his support to children. If they have uh, dysphoria, if the boy thinks, if little Johnny thinks he's little Jenny, President Biden is for little Johnny being uh, mutilated. He has said, let the children decide. Now we swallow that camel. He can be for all these things and still get our support. But now they have gone too far. Wait just a minute. If you are going to invite our to the White House along with LSU. Now that's too much. That's going to cost you the, uh, the, the vote. That's going to cost you black support because, oh my God, you can't do that. But you can do all these other things and we'll stand by you and support you and vote for you. And uh, I, I hope someone tell this wonderful basketball player, uh, Angela Reese, uh, uh, the latest story says that uh, she uh, doesn't accept the First Lady Jill Biden's apology. And uh, uh, all I can say is uh, 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 to Mrs. Reese, I don't know you. Uh, from what I can see, you're a beautiful young lady. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and Gary, she's an, an, an effeminate, pretty girl playing basketball. And you can see the effort that she put in looking like a lady while playing. And, and she can play. The girl can just ball. But listen, just know, uh, First Lady Jill Biden is as probably as far up the ladder as she's going to go in this life. She is the First Lady of the United States. Whether you voted for or not, and, um, and you might want to be careful, you know, because uh, you, you're a basketball player and a college student and, you, and, uh, and, 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 a, and a nice, beautiful sister. Now, you don't know who she knows. So, you know, know when your point is being made, know when uh, you, you, you know, you, you, you've done it. And, and know when, you know, if a person apologizes, the Bible teaches, if they repent, forgive them, and, and you move on. Uh, and I think the Lord will bless you. So, my friends, my, the whole point of this, and this one's probably, Gary, a little different, but, but the whole point of it is we're straining at gnats and swallowing camels. I hope the African-American community is much more politically savvy than that. I hope that we do at some point look around and see how the president's support. Here's another big camel for all things LBGTQ and all of the other letters that go along with it and, and numbers. How this uh, 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 disproportionately affects our community. Most of our children are born into homes, you know, like 70 to 72 percent where there are no dads. What well, do we need to have drag queens endorsed, uh, wicked lifestyles endorsed, wicked sexual behavior endorsed where dad is already missing? And yet this man supports these things uh, completely. And we swallow that camel. We're swallowing camels and straining at a net because at the end of the day it's a basketball game at the end of the day it's a game i'm talking about spiritual wickedness in high places i'm talking about spiritual wickedness that we are accepting i'm talking about the slaughter of the unborn our future our future blacks are being systematically erased by the abortion industry and i want to say something to the men who are watching now at least 81 percent of the time 
The sister says that if you, if the man would support the baby, she would give birth to it. So this is by no means a female issue. This is a people issue. And for those who may be watching today who have uh, had an abortion or you've been guilty of any of the sins that we've mentioned, if you've repented of your sins, Jesus has forgiven you. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm not here to make you feel bad. But I just I just pray. I pray. And I am a Shannon Sharp fan. Uh, I, I like the brother. I think he's a cool guy. Uh, I don't agree with e everything anyone says, uh, but uh, I, I, I appreciate uh, uh, his show. And I appreciate the rest of them. They just, they, Gary, they just cuss too much for me. I don't, all this cussing, what's that all about? I might need to do one on that. I know this. The Bible says we have to give an account of every word. One of these days, every, every, every word of profanity you let fly, you're going to have to explain it to the God who made everything. Amen. And uh, let's see then uh, 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 how, how you're going to do that because you're going to have to do it. But I pray that our people, I pray that Shannon is wrong. I pray that our people will wake up, will wake up, wake up America, wake up black America, wake up, wake up, wake up and recognize who are the true racists. No one uh, like the founder of Planned Parenthood, no one was a greater darling to the KKK than Margaret Sanger. The founder of Planned Parenthood, KKK loved her to death. Oh, they invited her to speak for them often. She was one of their circuit preachers. And she convinced black preachers in Harlem to buy into the lies that she was selling and then to sell those lies, those lies to their congregants. And they did it. And we swallowed that camel. And here we are today, straining at a gnat. Well, join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> you guessed it. Bible study. We're going to walk in the word of the Lord together. We're in our Easter week services. I'm still talking about the sovereignty of God, and we look forward to seeing you tonight. I'm going to be here. I came off of sabbatical. I want to be at church tonight, and it's not because I don't have tremendous preachers. I know you were blessed last week by uh, uh, missionary uh, uh, Douglas. I know that you were blessed week before last by evangelist uh, Crystal Amanchuku. God has blessed us with a deep bench here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, both men and women who can deliver the word with power and authority. So that is not my concern at all because we have wonderful, capable people who are ready to, to preach and to teach the word of God. But my friends, I love you and I look forward to spending this time with you. And then Pam and I are going to go and uh, take another little break. And I, again, thank you, honey, for being so kind as to releasing me, you know, she's, she's looking out for me, you know, she's doing all she can to keep me alive and well and going. And sometimes you have to save a person from themselves, you know, and Pam does a great job, but she uh, let me talk to you today and I'm going to preach to you tonight. God bless you. We'll see you right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.